Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I help clients with SIBO and other gut related conditions so they can feel and look their best. So if you're somebody that's maybe struggling with SIBO and you have a lot of bloating that's gotten you out of your routine, you don't feel like going to the gym, you're just uncomfortable from that all the time, or maybe eating's not as fun for you anymore or you're not sure what to eat, check out this video and also some of my related videos on my channel for more information. Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room regarding SIBO treatment probiotics. Should you take them or should you avoid them during SIBO treatment? On one hand, adding bacteria to a condition that is quite literally defined as having too many bacteria, it does sound a little bit crazy. When I did my own personal treatment for having SIBO, based on my research that I did, I decided not to take one and it did end up working. You can see exactly what I did here in my SIBO supplements video if you'd like. Although my regimen did work for me, fortunately, everyone's experience with SIBO is completely different. And there's actually quite a bit of data that supports the use of probiotics for the treatment of SIBO. I'll share a little bit of it with you here. So do probiotics actually help with the treatment of SIBO? In 2017, a meta-analysis of 18 studies was conducted by the Journal of Clinical Gastroenterology. It hoped to find answers to two specific questions. One, are probiotics effective at preventing SIBO? And two, are probiotics actually effective at treating SIBO? After pooling all the data from the 18 studies, it was found that in terms of preventing SIBO, probiotics were not really effective at doing that. However, it was determined that they were effective at treating SIBO, reducing the amount of hydrogen gas in the intestines, and even treating abdominal discomfort. In this meta-analysis, it was found that probiotics were effective at decontaminating SIBO about 63% of the time if you average all of the studies together. From this data, it is safe to assume that there may be a role for probiotics in the treatment of SIBO. Okay, so we've established that there appears to be some benefit in taking probiotics for SIBO, but there's thousands of different probiotics, so which ones should you actually take? Dr. Michael Ruscio gives a good take on probiotics, which I'll explain next. And just as a disclaimer, Dr. Ruscio has not reviewed or approved any of the comments or content that I'm making and is not liable for anything that I say in this video. He indicates that there's three basic types of probiotic and for most people, the gut will benefit the most if all three of them are included. He uses a three-legged bar stool analogy to explain this. Personally, I've never seen a three-legged bar stool. That's beside the point though, maybe you have. Nonetheless, continuing on with the metaphor, if the bar stool has just one or two legs, obviously it's not gonna be able to stand up or support itself, but if it has all three, there's a good balance of everything and the stool supportive, and hopefully in this metaphor, your gut will be as well. Let's get into discussing what the three types are. So the first type out of the three are lactobacillus and bifidobacterium based blends. These are the most common ones you'll see whether you're going off over to the store or if you're shopping online for a probiotic. If you've scoured the internet looking at probiotics, you've probably seen countless number of these. Be careful though because your return on investment with probiotics can vary greatly. One important factor to keep in mind is taking a high number of CFUs, also known as colony forming units, which are the unit of measure for probiotics. For most people, if you're doing SIBO treatment or just in general with a lactobacillus bifidobacterium based probiotic, that's probably good to take a minimum of 10 billion CFUs. Back when I worked in the pharmacy, it wasn't uncommon. If I looked at the shelves, I'd see some that had 3 billion, 1 billion, or even 100 million CFUs. And you kind of think to yourself, why are these, why are we selling these? Why are these even here? For a small portion of people, if you do start out with a higher number of CFUs and a, a probiotic, it's possible you can be more gassy, but in general, this isn't an issue for most people. And the super low dose ones, like the 1 billion or less even, they're generally not ones that you're really going to want to purchase. When I talk about these quantities, I mean in reference to the Bifidobacterium lactobacillus species specifically. But please, if you remember only one thing, from this video, please remember the following. If you ever hear your doctor say, just go take a probiotic or any probiotic will do, tell them no. Probiotics are all different. The one that you choose definitely matters. So hopefully you've either watched this video or been consulted by somebody that knows what they're talking about with probiotics.
still on the lactobacillus bifidobacterium. Another factor to keep into consideration is to definitely try to include the more helpful strains of probiotics. For these families, it may include lactobacillus rhamnosus and lactobacillus plantarum. There's obviously a lot of other good ones as well. These are just two notable ones. In general, lactobacillus bacteria are better if you have looser stools, and then the bifidobacterium are generally better if you struggle with more constipation. Don't take this completely overboard though. If you have constipation, it's generally good to have some lactobacillus in there as well. And if you have looser stools, don't completely eliminate the bifidobacterium. Remember, more microbial species and diversity is almost always better in these cases. So the second type of probiotic will probably surprise you because it's not actually even a type of bacteria. It's actually a beneficial yeast. It's called Saccharomyces boulardii. As a quick note, if you do have an allergy or sensitivity to mold or yeast, it's not recommended to use this product. To the best of my knowledge, this is the only widely used beneficial yeast. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but to the best of my knowledge, this is the only one that I'm aware of. Saccharomyces boulardii is great at calming the immune system and promoting a good balance of gut flora. Most products that you'll find have around a three to five billion count of CFUs for Saccharomyces boulardii specifically, and this is a good amount. They are often found in combination with the lactobacillus bifidobacterium blends. So if you do find one that is in combination that looks good, by all means, go for it. I tend to shy away a little bit from the ones that use a proprietary blend because they don't tell you the exact specific amount of each probiotic that is given of each type. All right, and then the third and final type of probiotic are called soil-based organisms or SBOs, and they're also known as spore-forming bacteria. As it sounds, they do live in the soil and have a very tough outer exterior that it's made of protein that kind of protects them from the stomach acid and then most other external threats as well. Most of the species that you'll see come from a family called the Bacillus family of bacteria. These bacteria actually do colonize and stay in the digestive tract, which is unique to probiotics because most of them actually pass through and are only there for a short transitory period. And these soil-based organisms are also very good at regulating the immune system and digestive health. In conclusion, there is a lot of evidence that points toward using probiotics for the treatment of SIBO and in the treatment of SIBO. As a treatment option, at least consider using the three types of probiotics, the lactobacillus bifidobacterium blends with Saccharomyces boulardii and the soil-based organisms, either as treatment alone or in combination with an antimicrobial herb regimen. And whatever you do, make sure you choose your probiotics wisely and don't just go with the any probiotic will do mindset. Thank you very much for watching. If you have tried probiotics for SIBO, please let me know which ones you've tried in the comments and how it worked. If you enjoyed or learned something from this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. That is all. Thanks everyone again for watching. I'll see you next week, Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Take care.